So now I can describe what gravity is doing. I even have a mechanism for it. Are you going to still ask me why is there gravity? Because I, I, what, I'm, what I'm claiming is answers to the how, when you understand the how enough, are tantamount to having answered the why question. So Neil deGrasse Tyson wants you to be satisfied with the how of science and doesn't want you to worry about the why. Here are my thoughts. So recently someone shared a clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson on the Joe Rogan podcast where he's discussing gravity. Now it's a very interesting discussion and it's a discussion about the how and the why of science. Now what he does in this clip is he's suggesting that look, we understand how gravity works so much so that we can land a spacecraft on Mars in a particular location and that's sufficient. That, sh that does away with the need for the why. But generally when he speaks or refers to the why in the video, throughout most of the video, he's referring to the why from the perspective of the how why, not the why why. Now let me clarify what I mean here. What do I mean by the how why and the why why? Now, Science deals with how the world works. It can't tell you why it works or functions in the way it does. This is a metaphysical question, right? But sometimes what some people do is they mix up these terms. Hence, even in this video, we see a lot of mixing up when he refers to the why, he's actually referring to the how. Now, let me explain this better via the analogy that I'm going to give you right now. The camera is recording. Why is the camera recording? Now, there's two types of explanations. The how why explanation is, well, I put the battery in the camera, I switched it on, there's an SD card in there, and I press record, and therefore the camera is recording. This is how it's working, how it's recording. But why is it recording? Why is it, the why why question is, why is it recording? For that answer is, well, because I wanted to record this video. That's why. So you can see there's two type of explanations. Generally, it's the how type or the why type but sometimes they mix up the how and call it the why. Now let's address his idea that look, we know how something works and we can make use of it, therefore we don't need to even worry about the why. Well consider this, imagine someone puts 10,000 pounds into your account every month. Now say you know how to use it, you can, or how it works, someone's put money in, it's sitting in your account, you take your card, you put your card in the machine, you take out the money and you use the money. You know how to use it, you know how it works. But wouldn't you ask why it's there, who put it there? For what reason? Of course you would. It's the mark of a rational mind to question that which did not have to be. The money didn't have to be in your account, so we would naturally question it as intelligent human beings, right? And just because you understand how something works, it doesn't do away with the need for the why type of explanation. Science obviously can't give you the why explanation because it's beyond the scope of science, right? So it's very important to clarify this. And my last point that I wanna make in this video is regarding science. Now, science is a beautiful method. As Muslims, we, we love the method, but we like to give it its true, correct position. We understand it's a method that deals with the physical world, in studying the physical world, but it doesn't end there, right? God gave us, God encourages us in the Quran. He says, look, reflect over the creation of the heavens and the earth and yourself. Look at the camels and how they were created, etc. Many verses where God tells us to engage with the physical world, to study it, but why? It's not just so we study it and make use of it. Of course, God made the world useful for us. He says in the Quran that He made everything subservient for us. And indeed, even gra think about gravity again. The, the, the force, whatever you want to call it, that we don't understand what it is, yet we can make use of it in such a way that we can land a spacecraft on Mars or the moon in a very precise location. It's amazing. And God says He made everything subservient for us. But there is a reason for that. It's not just so that we engage with it and benefit in a worldly, from a, from a selfish perspective but we also actually acknowledge the one that gave it to us. Very beautiful verse in the Quran where God says, He brought us out of our mother's wombs not knowing anything. And then He gave us hearing and sight, our senses essentially, and minds, our ability to reason. And isn't that what we do in science? We observe the physical world we, through our senses and then we reason upon our observations, but why? Not so that we can just be satisfied with that and just enjoy that and benefit from that without, without being grateful. But God says so that we may be grateful, so that we may give thanks back to the one that created everything and maintains and sustains everything. And isn't it a part of human nature to be grateful? When we understand someone gives us something, gives us a gift, we jump to say thank you. But what about the one that gave us this magnificent world and made it subservient for us in a way we can make full use of it? Shouldn't we be grateful to him? I leave you with that. Let me know your thoughts below in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe. And until next time, take care.